Sean, let's talk about in today's video how there's two things that you can do right now to help you hit it farther on your next drive. Sean, we see two moves every day that really kill distance with the driver. And they're easy fixes if you're aware of them. Yeah. So the first thing is we'll see guys get to the top and they start hugging themselves. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> Which will choke your distance. Yeah, what we, what we mean there is as you get to the top of the swing, the average amateur, a lot of the higher handicappers actually will pull their arms toward them, almost like they're giving themselves like a bear hug, right? Like, right. Or feeling like they're choking themselves out. That motion of pulling in the arms actually shuts off the turn. Although the arms are getting back there and the club's getting back there, you didn't move this piece, which is really essential to play good golf, is moving this torso. Right. So. The, do that again face on there yeah. and so what that does is rob you of all the width of your swing and by that we mean his hands now are really in close to his body and he's got no width now the reason that's bad for your distance is on the downswing you've got to try to recover that so what you're going to do is throw everything off of you and then you're going to spin speed early and then come down and flip at it and just have really poor ball speed when you do that yeah and the other problem with that motion is Normally the guy that does that and pulls the arms in to finish the backswing will go this way. Right, they'll, the ball. Start, they'll fire the shoulders first because it's such a weak spot. So go back up there again. Yeah. I can literally hold Sean's arms in yeah. with one finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I can barely move them. Yeah, so yeah. instead we want to have width going into the top of the swing. Mm -hmm. And we want to say, let's say if the right arm, and it's a good way to think about this with the right arm. So if that's zero degrees, that's 90 degrees. We see so many recreational golfers well past 90 degrees at the top. Now, if your right arm is bent like this at the top, good luck trying to have width. Yeah, it gets things way too narrow. Yep. Again, turns off the torso rotation, which, which we'll talk about in a minute, and destroys any chance that you have to come down on plane. Normally that golfer, again, we call it the sledgehammer, right? Yep. Pull the sledgehammer back close and bang over the top. That's the motion that most golfers will normally make. And we'll look at it here in a second on gears, but most professionals will be the opposite. They'll have zero to 70, right? Degrees less than 90, someone like Rory, around 55. So that's a ton of width to really develop that wide arc so you can put speed on top of that rather than this narrow cast move that happens all the time. Now, yeah. this ties into the second. We've, we told them there was gonna be two. The second yeah. piece is allowing the shoulders or making it so the shoulders can turn past the chest turn. Okay. So what we see all the time is with golfers will come in, they'll turn their chest and shoulders like a block of wood. In fact, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of 3D systems out there who aren't able or that aren't able to Separate. differentiate the, between the shoulders and the chest. And they absolutely are not the same and they don't turn the same. So guys will turn all of this as a block of wood and that's not gonna be enough to hit it anywhere. So then they'll start kind of trying to find extra swing length by doing this. So they both really feed one another so let's talk about a good way to determine if your shoulders are working correctly or if they're being a block of wood. Yeah, so as you get to the top and make your rotation here, I think you can pay attention to where this back shoulder is. Do that again. Yeah. So you're gonna to start to see his right shoulder pop up on this side of his head. And he's doing that by keeping the width. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, I'm pulling the right shoulder blade back slightly, but I'm still keeping width away this way, if that makes sense. Yep. Uh, if I didn't do that and I was a block of wood, I could only take myself back about right here. I get all this good range of motion by pulling this one, this right shoulder back slightly, and then this left one move across slightly, and that adds to the rotation I've already made with my rib cage. Right, and we've seen golfers in their 70s come in, and, you know, and the first thing is I don't, I don't rotate enough to hit it far, I need more distance. So they're doing like this. Show them how to move the right arm correctly. That's it and they've added 30 degrees of shoulder rotation. It's a different world for them when they're out there with their driver. And for most of you, it's gonna feel like a shorter golf swing and it may actually be- uh, shorter, shorter arm swing maybe. Yeah, and it may, and the club may actually be in a shorter spot, but you're gonna be able to develop so much more speed from there and put the club in a good spot coming down that you're gonna start hitting the sweet spot and add distance li literally instantly. Right, because this is a false system of distance, here to there. Don't hug yourself. Don't, don't hug yourself, you'll <laughs> choke your distance. All right, well, let's look in gears now and we'll show you exactly what should happen. Then we'll come back and show you some drills. To better see how the trail elbow bends and its relationship to the chest and shoulder rotation, 
we're going to take a look at the swing from a different point of view. We'll need to position the camera so it's looking straight down at a 90 degree angle to the swing plane. This is going to give you a clear view of what happens in the good swings we're going to show you, and we'll also give you a better picture of what you're trying to do in your own swing. We're going to take a look at three different PGA Tour players. All are multiple winners out there on tour, and all have very effective golf swings by any measure. We're going to show you a few things here on the screen. First is the number on the left. This is the golfer's right elbow bend as he moves throughout the backswing. The number here on the right is his rib cage rotation throughout the backswing. You'll notice a number of lines going through his body. The one we're going to focus on in this video is his shoulder line, and you'll be able to watch that in real time as he moves. Our first golfer here is playing now on the PGA Tour Champions. He's won on both the Senior Tour and multiple times on the regular tour. We're going to use him to represent kind of the lower end of the range with regards to chest rotation. The first thing to notice, and you're going to see this with all the golfers, is how the shoulders are protracted or extended forward here at setup. Every golfer is going to have some of this in their setup. The key is what you do with it once you start moving. All right, so let's stop him here at left arm parallel. This large space that you're seeing here created by his hands in his chest, this is what we like to call the most important real estate in the golf swing. You're going to want to preserve as much of this real estate as possible by the time you reach the top of your golf swing. As our player reaches the top, notice how his right shoulder now is retracted. This is a key movement to get the shoulder turn greater than your chest turn. He's bent his right arm to 95 degrees, which is about the max you want to bend it. Most amateur golfers are going to bend their right arm well past 100 degrees. And if you bend it too much here at the top, you're going to start to lose that important real estate that we just mentioned. Now, he's only turned his chest 65 degrees. But look at how he was able to add 25 degrees more of shoulder rotation, shoulder separation from his chest, by taking advantage of the protraction-retraction ability of the shoulders. Using your trail arm and shoulder correctly like this is a great way to maintain width and to offset the effects of father time. Our second golfer here is a big hitter. He generates a lot of speed from a relatively short backswing. Now, as he reaches the top of his swing, you'll notice he was able to turn his chest a bit more than our first golfer. But because of his shorter backswing, he doesn't need to create as much separation between his chest and his shoulders. But he is still retracting his right shoulder on the way to the top. This is what's allowed him to preserve a massive chunk of his real estate. By only bending his right arm into that low 70 range, he was able to preserve the width to his swing. And that's basically the range that we see many of these great players from the PGA Tour, right in that low 70 range. Playing from a more compact top of the backswing position is a great way to generate speed. If you're looking to tighten up the top of your backswing, just remember it's critical to do it with width like you see our pro here doing. The last golfer that we're going to look at today is on the other end of the spectrum from what we've seen so far. He has the ability to produce some serious rotation and separation in his backswing. This is something that most of us cannot do or need to do, but we have seen some golfers out there with this level of mobility. So we wanted to include this swing so you at least have an understanding of what it should look like or at least be able to marvel at it. Now, even though his final numbers are quite large, his relationships and how he gets there is going to be the same as what we saw from our first two golfers. And that's the important takeaway here. Most of us won't be able to turn our shoulders 134 degrees, but we can separate our shoulder turn from our chest turn. Most of us won't be able to have just 65 degrees of right arm bend, but we can be around that 90 degrees or less. And by doing both, that's going to allow you to have a whole bunch of width at the top of your swing, which will help you generate more speed in your downswing. And who doesn't want more speed? So we got Sean all suited up for the pool, right? It's about 110 degrees out that here. That way. I wish it was that way. <laughs> all right. So what we've got is we went to the dollar store and got a, a swimming. And we use these all the time in lessons. And uh, we'll link you down below to Amazon if you have bigger arms and want more of an adult size that are just easier yeah, to get I on. Yeah, these little arms. Right. Yeah, little <laughs> arms. So, uh, <laughs> so what we're doing is creating a feedback device because most golfers just aren't aware of how this arm moves. Yeah. Right. So we're going to put it for him. We're going to put it on his forearm just because this one will be hard for him to get up here by his bicep. But either way works. And he's going to try to keep that plastic on the swimming from touching his bicep. Okay. So 
Yeah, I have it down here below and I can feel this if I go beyond 90. Right. So for me, I like to feel like it's not going to hit my arm. Exactly my upper right. Arm. Exaggerated it straight. Yeah, so, you know, it's a great drill because I, I tend to overfold sometimes. Um, so, or overfold the right arm and that turns my, shuts my turn off. So for me, I'm going to hit some slow shots, really feeling like I don't bend this right arm as much as I go to the top and I can really feel my- It's a different group, right? Torso stretching and stretching these muscles kind of across this way in my, my stomach, right? Now, grab, don't, don't grab your driver, even though this is gonna help yeah. you immensely with your driver, learn how to control this right arm with the short clubs first, then graduate to the long clubs. Because as he said, it's gonna feel like the first time you do this, you're not making a backswing at all. Yeah, it really does feel short. And a lot of you are gonna not do the drill because it feels so short, but you gotta stick with it. Yep. Because yep. you'll get your turn from here, right? And some of your shoulder motion instead of just banging this right arm back and over folding it. So I'm gonna make a couple rehearsals and then just chip one out there so you can see kind of the, yep. the, the uh, pay attention to how fast I go. I'm not trying to rip this ball. That's hugely important. A lot of you are gonna get in here and start making full swings. Like we do these online lessons all the time with our guys and they're always, you know, we'll do a Skype call with them or a FaceTime and they're always going too fast with the drills. It's very, they well, we'll never see in the lesson, down. They'll make a full speed and they'll go, okay, did you touch that? I don't they, know. They don't even know. I don't know. So you got to go slow enough to have the feedback be useful. So I'm going to go real slow on this one, but make a fairly full motion, which a lot of you need to learn how to do. And just chip it out there. Okay. I so mean, that was a full swing. It went 60 yards. Looking at it from my point of view, I could see his shoulder turn. It was just under 90 degrees, say in that 80 to 85 range. So let's chip another one. Okay. And see you work on that shoulder turn now. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not able to use the speed to do it. I actually have to right. work these muscles, right? So let's try that again. There we go. There we go. Whew. That's some work for it's me. It's tough to do early in the Getting morning. old. <laughs> Here we go. Good. All yeah. right, well past 90 there. You kept the width in your arms. Now from there, you can get used to doing that. The speed will start to increase. The club can go longer. You can go a little faster. But for many of you, it's going to take a progression to work up to that. But it's going to be well worth the squeeze, right? That juice is well worth the squeeze. Exactly. All right, now let's come back with a second drill. Okay, Mike, we talked about the right arm width and how that helps uh, get things moving correctly, right? Especially the torso rotation. Talk to them about this little drill that you have where you move the shoulders independently of the rib cage. I think that's helpful. Yeah, this is a great awareness drill slash stretch slash just getting the body used to doing the right thing. So what we'll have golfers do, and we'll do this in the gear suit or we'll do it outside of the gear suit, is I want you to keep your chest square to a wall. So I'm facing the back wall here and I'm gonna keep my chest square. So I'm not gonna turn my chest, okay? Put my arms out like Frankenstein. All I'm gonna do is retract my right shoulder, retract my left shoulder. So what I'm doing on gears, this would show no chest rotation, but I think when I'm loose, I can get about 35 degrees of shoulder rotation without moving my chest. Yeah, and like if Mike was against the wall right here, he's keeping his upper back kind of flush mm -hmm. to the wall, right? And he's still able to crank those shoulders back and forth. And what you don't want to do, we see this all the time is that. Exactly. Right? That's, that's cheating it. You want to isolate the shoulders and the scaps really feel like my shoulder blades pulling toward my spine and stretching out with the opposite hand. So one hand goes forward, one shoulder goes forward, one shoulder goes back. That really starts to separate now the chest turn from the shoulder turn. That's important in the golf swing because I'll put my club down. As you swing back here, okay, so you can see that difference that extra gear there. And Mike can do it without slamming this chest uh, left arm across right. or over bending this right arm. Right, so I'm not doing this to get that. In fact, from down the line, you want to keep this arm in front of the chest. I have guys do this all the time. Keep this arm, this 90 degree arm intact, right here, turn, yeah. pull it back. So you don't want to start cheating it this way because that's not golf swing. That's going to kill your whip. Here, yeah, right there. And you're getting, it's going to feel like a small movement, but when you have something like gears to measure that, now all of a sudden you're increasing your shoulder turn above your chest rotation 25 to 35 degrees. That's a huge source for power that you could absolutely use on your next drive because the chest doesn't turn all that much. No. 70 range is Maybe pretty not, good. I think some of the guys get to 90, but the, the guys that do 90 are always getting the shoulders far than right. like a McElroy. Yeah, exactly gets right. Gets his shoulders cranked around. He does it by, like, just like Mike was showing, pulling the right back and letting the left one move out in front. That's exactly right. So you start to combine those. And again, the width has to be there first or you will not turn your shoulders. 
keep the width. You learn how to generate the width, then you can start to really tap into this fifth gear in the golf swing, and you are going to hit the ball farther when you do it. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you want us to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you want to add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're going to see a link. Click on it. It's going to take you to a page. You're going to enter your name and email address. We're going to send you an email where you're going to get access to instant distance, which is a video training that we put out. We know it's going to help you. We know we're going to see you farther down the fairway.